Hey, this is Blunga Gamer, and welcome to another Little Black Sheep Game Review, where we'll take a quick look at the third and last Neverhood Studio game, Boombots. By now, I've said more than enough about the Neverhood, its PlayStation sequel Skull Monkeys, and even the recent spiritual successor Amarcrog, but Boombots is a bit of an oddball compared to those. If you thought the shift from a PC point and click adventure game to a PlayStation side scrolling platformer was drastic, Boombots is somehow even more different despite being their second game for the PlayStation, as it has no direct connection to the Neverhood universe, save for an unlockable, and is more of a 3D arena fighting game similar to the likes of Custom Robo or Power Stone. Because of that, we have a game that doesn't quite have the same cult following as the Neverhood or Skull Monkeys, and is mostly forgotten. In other words, this is an even more obscure game from the makers of the already obscure Neverhood games. So, obscureception? Okay, that was a stretch, but regardless of how unknown this is, let's see how it actually plays. Boombots came out on the PlayStation on Halloween of 1999, developed by Neverhood Incorporated with some help from DreamWorks this time, and published by South Peak Interactive. The premise is that it's the year 15 billion, and a group of alien cats has invaded Earth and taken all the planet's house cats, effectively eliminating half the source of all funny internet videos, pictures, and gifts in the process. You can take my planet and my freedom, but you alien bastards will never take my cat! I still exploit it now and then for my videos. You hear that, Rolly? No extraterrestrial cats are going to take you on my watch! Yeah, that's right! But thanks to a scientist named Dr. Pick, he creates Boombots, combat-ready robots to go to the alien cat world so they can rescue our beloved derpy pets and eliminate the cat snatchers in the process. As I mentioned before, the game is an arena-style fighting game, where you mostly shoot your opponent until they're scrap. With three of the face buttons, you have a basic machine gun, guided bombs that you can steer by holding down the corresponding button, and scud missiles that arc towards opponents. In addition to these weapons, every Boombot has a kick move with the L1 or L1 buttons, which can be used as a deflect against missile attacks, and a grab with the L2 or R2 buttons that can perform various moves depending on the button combination with the grab. For mobility, you have a double jump and even a glide with the X button and dashing by clicking down the left stick, or double tapping the D-pad in direction if you're not playing with a DualShock. The combat style of Boombots is a little unorthodox, and playing it made me realize the reason why this game isn't well known. It's pretty... Mediocre. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy games like Custom Robo and Power Stone, but those came out the same year as Boombots, if you count the first Custom Robo game in Japan since we didn't get one until 2004, and are frankly better games than this. The easier of the two to compare is Custom Robo and Boombots, not just because robots, but because they are both primarily ranged weapon based. Only Custom Robo handles it better by being able to target your opponent at all times, allowing for quick and smooth combat. Boombots on the other hand has no lock-on in terms of movement, so you'll be running and jumping around awkwardly trying to get in a good position for a shot. Your machine gun, while loosely aims towards the enemy and is rapid firing, does pitiful damage. So much so that I only ever found it useful to finish off bots if they have a sliver of health left. Actually, guiding missiles leaves you wide open and is only good if your opponent is far away, so it's best just to fire them unguided as a straight missile the rest of the time. The most reliable projectile is the scud missile as it homes in and can reach boom bots on higher levels, but is slow and easy to dodge or deflect back. Again, Custom Robo pulled it off better. Granted, that comparison is mostly for the weapons aspect, as the movement and arena layouts are more similar to Power Stone. There's also the fact you can collect a few power-ups that show up on the field, such as small health recovery, double damage, or shields, some of which you can even find in destructible areas, but that aspect is only used in a few stages. The most common pickup are these yellow energy balls that fill up a power meter for weapon ammo. The more energy you collect, the more powerful your attacks become, and if you fill up the entire meter, your character will go into Mongo Boombot mode. Think of it as getting all the power stones in Power Stone to be able to do massive damage. Only in Boombots, it just lets you fire a few powerful blasts and is moot compared to all the different powered-up versions of characters in Power Stone, and its close quarters combat easily bests Boombots, or lack thereof, because it quickly becomes a chaotic slap fist of trying to grab and kicks to get out of grabs and point blank weapon firing. Deflecting missiles back is a good strategy, but the position and timing for them is pretty strict, especially when you and your opponent can lob them back and forth like a Ganondorf fight, getting more powerful weeks to deflect and hope you luck out. And when you do grab someone, the prompt for different attack combinations aren't very clear. Do you press the combination as you grab, or do you press the button after you grab them? Because both of those seem to work in some capacity. Even with the manual listing all the grapple combos, I couldn't exactly figure out how to do them reliably. I still managed to do some different throws and grab attacks, which can do some good damage, but don't bother trying to grab computer players after a few stages, because they are almost impossible to grab without them slipping away like they're covered in oil. Now would be a good time to go over the single player, which is the standard fight everyone to beat the game. However, if you keep a streak of undefeated victories, you'll be rewarded with extra fights now and then of hidden characters and their stages. If you defeat them, they are unlocked for the game. But if you are defeated, you lose your chance to unlock that character as well as later secret ones because you lost your undefeated status. And you can lose it in any fight for that matter, so you essentially have to beat everyone in one shot if you want to unlock everything. Or you could just use a passcode on the main menu if you don't feel like doing that. What? 
Or better yet, because you can save after each fight, you can just quit out and reload the save in order to keep your undefeated status up to that point and try again. Admittedly, it is save scumming, but there isn't really a reason not to unless you want to self-impose an artificial challenge of actually being undefeated in Boombots, which I'm sure won't get you much gaming credibility even if people actually knew about this game. The roster of Boombots is... interesting to say the least. There's Boomer, the balanced main character, Hans, a large arm tiny leg Texas cowboy robot, Airplane, who is a airplane, Chicky Boom, the token female character, Dog E Dog, who looks like an offshoot of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Mauser, Pittsburgh, the token slow strong character, Moby Tank, who is also slow but packs a punch and weaponry, Le Chip, a monkey robot who is an overplayed French stereotype, Hara Hara, another cartoon stereotype, this one being a Japanese mantis bot, and Evil Boom, who is basically just an evil boomer. As for the five secret characters, there's a lady wasp called the Lady Wasp. Why do I bother with the self-explanatory ones? Clayman, which he and his neighborhood stage is a nice throwback to those games, even if the part of him being a secret character is spoiled by being on the cover, albeit in the background. Then there's... Oh, Canada. A female hockey robot. This one hits a little close to home due to being Canadian myself. Oh sure, that's all those Canadians are known for. Hockey and maple syrup and our dollar being low compared to the States, eh? Freaking hosers. For the love of then we have Ed Head, a robot with the head of one of the game's animators. It's high levels of Uncanny Valley for sure, and reaches nightmare fuel with some of its grab moves. <laughs> Lastly, there's Mandu, the leader of the alien cats. Yes, the only time you actually fight any of them is if you beat all the others with your undefeated streak. Even with all the characters, a main problem this game has is that they don't play very different from each other. They do have various degrees of weapon power, throw damage, speed, and the like, but they have little to no attack variation. Because of that, the only real differences with projectile attacks are damage values and visual cosmetics to match the characters. In fact, Lady Wasp is the only one to have a shotgun style gun instead of a rapid fire one, which makes me question why they bothered to do that with just one character. It's this that really hurts the replay value, and there isn't even any point to play through the single player again because the text from Dr. Pick is the same. Same, just with the name of your chosen character. I'm sorry, did you just say you created Clayman, Doctor? I know for a fact you did not. In the Neverhood, it was... Uh, oh, I almost said a major spoiler for that game. Plus, while there are Claymation cutscenes after some fights, which is the expected Neverhood quality, most just revolve around nonsensical scenes with Boomer and the alien cats, and there's no different cutscenes depending on the character you choose, so these are all that were made for the game, unfortunately. And once you beat all the characters and potentially the secret ones too... That's pretty much it. You just get the alien cat planet being nuked somehow, a congratulations from Dr. Pick, and a behind the scenes of the Neverhood team working on the game and goofing off. So, I'm guessing we saved our cats too before we blew up the aliens, right? Well, here's something that puzzles me. In the game and manual, the story is just go stop the alien cats and rescue ours. But on the About section for Boombots on the Neverhood website, which, yes, is still up, tells a more in-depth story setup that's not in the game, such as feline aliens using their own Boombots to take our cats, that there were two other scientists, Dr. Doe and Dr. Newton, that along with Pick, gave up our cats as ransom for our planet, which turns out was our only defense against rat aliens, so we are actually saving our cats to combat them as well, and there's also supposedly an alien cat double agent? What the hell is this? Is this the actual story of the game, or some kind of early concept of the narrative that got stripped down during development? I honestly don't know, but if this is or was going to be the full story, then why post it on your site? It's really inconsistent. Okay, the narrative is obviously nothing to take seriously, as Boombots has the humor style and Neverhood games are known for. Only it goes for more toilet humor this time around, which I'm not a big fan of if done a lot, which Boombots does. Complete with one level having a giant litter box that has been used. Lovely. That smell is peor que la muerte. And going back to the About section, look at the acronyms for some of these factions that were going to be in the game. Feline Alien Research Troop, United Rat Infestation Nation, and Boombot's Underground Technology Team. Yeah, real mature guys. The rest of the gags just come up as abrupt, which I suppose is what it's going for, but some scenes are literally just a quick slapstick adding nothing to what little narrative the game has. They often just made me go, um, okay, what was the point of that other than being silly? And there's also scenes that come across as reused jokes from the Neverhood or Skull Monkeys, as if the team didn't have any more ideas for Boomboss besides slapstick and toilet humor. Although I will admit, some of the dialogue from Dr. Pick during fight briefings did make me laugh, but the overall tone felt disjointed in comparison to their earlier games. I will 
at least give the Neighborhood team props for being their first and only 3D game. Which doesn't look too bad all things considering. The polygonal graphics are a standard for late 90s PlayStation, but the animations are done well. And the claymation scenes are always a treat to see in any of these games, even if these don't amount to much. The art style of Duck to Naple and his team are present, but they aren't exactly the most original of character designs. Gee, a menacing cat character. Mr. To Naples certainly never did that before. As for the music, it is done by Terry Scott Taylor, which, while I enjoy his soundtracks for the Neverhood, Skull Monkeys, and Armor Krog, Boombots is the least memorable. It's still not bad, and there is some of his signature scatting and whatnot here, but there's only a few variations that gets repetitive, and sounds like he just sort of messed around with settings on a keyboard for these tracks. Overall, yeah, I can see why this is the least regard game for the Neverhood team. I do like the general ideas and can appreciate them branching out to other things, but Boombots loses its lasting appeal pretty quickly. And even with Clayman as an unlockable, you're honestly not missing much if you are a Neverhood fan. It's not a bad game, but it's not something I'll be going back to anytime soon. Even including some multiplayer I played with Zero Master, I did everything I wanted to do and get in about two hours. If you do want to get this game for Neverhood completion or as a novelty arena fighter, the game is thankfully cheap to buy from eBay and the like. A benefit for being obscure and not in high demand for sure. It's definitely easier to get Boombots for a decent price than the Neverhood or Skull Monkeys, I can tell you that. So that was a game, I guess. Uh, what did you think of it, Rolly? I mean, it did have cats in it and, um... My thoughts exactly. Hey, thanks for watching this quick review on Boombots, even though it went past 10 minutes, but whatever, a review is still a review. If you like what you saw and haven't already, you can maybe check out some other videos, such as Armor Krog or Halo Wars here. And if you would like to stay up to date with upcoming videos, you can subscribe here on YouTube or follow me on my Twitter. There's also a Patreon to consider if you want to support these reviews. It would help me a lot and I promise to make it worth your while. Oh, and don't forget to check out River City Gamers for more reviews and things from others that could use some attention. Links for those will be in the description below. Okay, that should be good for the shameless plugging at the end of videos. I'd figure I'd start doing these with voiceovers to better convey everything, but also subsequently drag this short review video out even longer. But in all seriousness, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh.